But it's time to say good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this monumentous occasion here in Logan, West Virginia, to celebrate uh, this new and very safe road from here down to Man, consisting of about 13.5 miles of new construction and a very smooth road indeed. An expensive ride, but uh, well worth the effort of many people involved in making today a reality. Also like to welcome in uh, our social media family around the world watching uh, on their favorite uh, iPad or computer, also on Governor Justice's website. Welcome in. We're in Logan, West Virginia, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I'm Randy Dameron with the West Virginia Department of Transportation, and I'll be your MC this afternoon, introducing our distinguished guests seated here on the stage. Now, here, this is important. After we cut the ceremonial ribbon at the conclusion, you will be the first to travel the new highway as you exit. You'll travel south on the new highway, and if you need to return back to Logan, you can take the first exit, hit uh, Old Route 10 and turn left, and you'll be headed back to uh, back north toward Logan. And um, we think you're gonna like the, uh, like the smooth road ahead. We'd like to begin our program today with an invocation with Pastor Mike Pollard. Mike is with the Zion Missionary Baptist Church in Madison. Mike's gonna first recognize the Route 10 committee people in attendance, and then offer our invocation, Mike. Thank you, Randy, and thank you, Triadelphia District. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, Randy and I, when we talked, I told him that before I pray, uh, I've got to acknowledge some people that are here. So uh, when I had the opportunity to pray at the UBB Memorial over in Beckley, when President Obama and others came in and opened the service, uh, I, I, something got wrong with me and I preached for about five minutes before I prayed so I think if, uh, if the Holy Ghost give me enough boldness to take a few minutes with the president in the building governor no disrespect but I got to acknowledge some few people here today thank you amen <laughs> amen uh, first of all we must say thank you to God Almighty this is the day that he has made. Uh, we're here today 20 years after we first started meeting and talking and discussing uh, a new road for our community. Uh, 20 years. We've gone through five governors. Governor Underwood, Governor Wise, Governor Manchin, and our dear friend and Governor Earl Ray Tomlin who's here today. And finally, the Honorable Mr. Jim Justice. Not only did we go through five governors, but we went through four Department of Transportation secretaries. <laughs> Sam Beveridge, Fred Van Kirk, don't tell me. Paul Maddox, and he's here running around in a white t-shirt somewhere. Paul Maddox is here, where is he? And now the Honorable Mr. Tom Smith. 20 years, five governors, four Department of Transportation secretaries, but also numerous local, county, state, and federal officials. And I'm not going to name them all. And when our committee was talking about getting ready for this today, they said, we don't want to be recognized individually. They say, let's be recognized as a whole community. And our committee, the Route 10 committee is here that's been with this thing the whole 20 years. And not only so, but what really got this thing to rocking and the rolling was when we had an opportunity to fill the field house over at Mann High School. And the reason we filled the field house was because the honorable former Congressman Nick Joe Rahal, who's been a champion on this
when we started talking to him about our dream, he started to talking to the pork barrel king, <laughs> Senator Robert Byrd, who was the man. And Senator Byrd sent us word back and said, is it just a little handful of radicals down there that want a road to nowhere, or is this a community-wide movement? And when the community, Tridelphia, Logan, we came together, we filled the field house over there at Mann. People were in the floor. The fire uh, commissioner could have arrested us all, but he wouldn't have had enough jail space to hold us all. But when we filled the field house, and Congressman Ray Hall, you were on the phone, and you talked to us, and we made a video of it, and we got the video and sent it to Congressman Ray Hall, who got it to Senator Byrd, and after Senator Byrd saw that video and saw those, I don't know what the number was, somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000 in that man field house, he and Congressman Ray Hall got us our first $53 million, and we knew we were on our way. Somebody ought to say amen now up in here. So I'm going to ask Tridelphia, Route 10 Committee, Logan, local officials, state officials, federal officials, anybody that came to a rally, anybody that said a prayer, please stand and be recognized right now. I'm almost through. <laughs> when we started, I think the projection was 300, maybe $250 million. From what I understand now, we may be riding on a 400, close to $1 million highway. But the money is always an 80, 20, federal, state, and match. The federal government provides the 80, the state, the 20. And we were talking on the phone to our committee persons earlier today. We never had any problem or delays when it came time for our state to match the money that came down from the federal. And we want to commend our state officials and those governors who kept the money coming. We never had to worry about it. They would just simply tell us, the money's there. It's going to be all right. <laughs> this road means to us, hillbilly lives matter too. Hillbilly lies matter to. I'm not talking about man hillbillies. I'm talking about southern West Virginia, down to earth, cold country, God given, God fearing, God loving hillbillies. Our lives matter too. And from day one, when we started this movement, we didn't start it on a it's going to be good for economic development. Economic development was a byproduct. We focused on safety. We focused on lives. Because even though it cost 400 or so million dollars, it actually cost some lives that are not here today. And one of those lives is one of the members of our committee who was on it from the start, Mr. Robert Perry, who passed a few months ago. in his 80s, went to every meeting, went to some meetings when nobody else could go and spoke up. In his 80s, fought for this, prayed for it, labored for it. He'll never get to drive it, but I believe that somewhere he's up above saying, well done, Tridelphia. <laughs> now I'm getting ready to close before I pray. And what I'm getting ready to say to you, I'm saying to our elected officials, those of us who have been on this project for 20 years from day one, Senator Byrd was a great champion on this project. 
But there was another gentleman Congressman Ray Hall, please stand. Yes, From the beginning to the end, he was our go-to guy. Yes, when we would come up against the brick wall, call Nicky Joe. When the money we was worried about the flow stopping, call Nicky. He'll get a hold of Bert. When Senator Byrd went on into glory, Congressman Ray Hall fought day and night, night and day, came to meetings, invited us to meetings. We would drive to Bluefield, Princeton area to meet with him in his office. He was always there. If there is one individual who deserves a well done, thou good and faithful servant, it's Congressman Nick Joe Ray Hall. Now, I said all that to say this. Our committee discussed it, and we decided that our recommendation to our officials, state, federal, Department of Transportation, legislature, is that because former Congressman Nick Joe Ray Hall was our champion, our go-to guy, that this new road will forever bear the name of Congressman Nick Joe Rahal. Stand with me, stand up. This is our recommendation. It's not an order. It's up to the legislature and perhaps the governor but I understand that it can be done in different ways, perhaps, in the regular legislative session, perhaps. That's where our local delegation would have to get together and sponsor the amendment. But then again, our governor, who's a friend of another fellow that lives in a bigger house than he does, who, who's not afraid to use the executive order pen when he wants to, He said, we'll get it done this afternoon, Nick. Would hey, man. If it's possible, if it's possible to do it through executive order from the governor's office, we would ask that it be done. If not, it has to go through the legislature. However, but if you decree it today, old Caesar, it's good as done, all right? However it has to be done, we want this. Bird's name is on everything, I'm telling you. We love him. We love him. But Congressman Ray Hall, he was our go-to guy. And with all sincerity, if there is another name that ends up on this road, Reverend Paul is going to have to break his tent out and go camping over on the Capitol grounds. And girl, Governor Tomlin promised me a bigger tent the next time. He was going to furnish it. I'm done. Thank God, thank God, it's time to pray. Before I pray, we want a moment of silence for all the lives that were lost on Route 10 years ago and even in the last year. We've lost several on Route 10. Everyone here today from Tridelphia, Logan County knows someone, maybe is related to someone or lost someone on old Route 10. And also we want to remember Mr. Robert Perry who was on our committee up until six or eight months ago when he passed. Remember him as we take a moment of silent prayer and then I'll close with prayer. Father God, we thank you this day for this wonderful occasion that we are here to celebrate. This is a celebration, Lord, of this is how community is supposed to work. This is how the community are supposed to come together, take their needs and their wishes to their 
local, state, and federal representatives. And then through prayer and labor, perseverance, blood, sweat, and tears, a day like this is made possible. And we just want to say thank you. We give you praise and glory and honor from whom all blessings flow. And we thank you that we can, uh, in a celebration like this, even not be afraid to open with prayer and praise and give you glory and honor because we are not just West Virginians. We are West by God Virginians. And we don't ever want to forget it. And we just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you. We pray for our nation. We wish they could be here to see this, how this community works together, rather than fights and bickers and pulls and seeks to destroy this great nation. We thank you. We give you praise, glory, and honor in Christ's name. And for his sake we pray. And let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Pollard. Well, next I want to ask that you stand for the singing of the national anthem. I'm honored to introduce a colleague. He is the West Virginia Division of Highway State Highway Engineer. This is Aaron Gillespie with our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight and the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. You may be seated, wow. And that's just part of the talent we have inside the West Virginia uh, Division of Highways. Thank you, Aaron, what a wonderful. Well, our first speaker this afternoon is a member of the Appropriations Committee in Congress and was uh, instrumental in securing federal funds for the FAST Act, which is, of course, the multi-year highway bill from Congress. Please welcome the Honorable Congressman Evan Jenkins to the podium. Thank you, sir. Well, good afternoon. Thank you for that uh, wonderful, wonderful message, Reverend. And uh, I will tell you, it took my breath away when you, obviously, from the national anthem talking about uh, the flag waving, and you all all felt it. When that breath of air and that wind came up and the flag stretched out, I tell you, I know the Lord's looking down on us. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you, Governor. What an honor. Uh, good to see you. Glad you're feeling better. But I do think about uh, the Governor Justice and I, thinking here we're both you know, a little bit pale maybe, maybe working hard. And I look at Congressman Ray Hall and I look at Governor Tomlin. Those suntans, those no ties, those guys are looking very relaxed. We're in the wrong line of work, Governor. One day, one day, I'm looking forward to that. In all seriousness, it is an opportunity for me to acknowledge and thank personally Congressman Ray Hall. 
you know, we think about our own mortality and we think about our Lord above and we know that we are on this earth for just a very short period and we talk about eternity. And me being on this stage as your current sitting congressman just happens to give me this seat on stage today. Somebody else will have this seat tomorrow and somebody had it yesterday. But projects like Route 10 take a long time and it took champions like Congressman Ray Hall and his predecessors and the governors who made sure that those funding uh, sources were there. So a true heartfelt congratulations. Uh, these are the seats that you all deserve because of the time, energy, and effort you put in to making this a reality. And I have an honor of representing you now in the United States Congress. And as mentioned, I do serve on the House Appropriations Committee. And just two years ago, we passed the first fully funded highway transportation bill in over a decade, bringing $2.5 billion just to West Virginia. So we continue to carry that torch for West Virginia, making sure that we have the resources to do roads like Route 10. We know this is just a segment. We need to take it on south. We need to take it on north. We need King Cole Highway. We need Coalfields Expressway. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we know as go the roads, so go the jobs. We've been decimated. But the spirit of the West Virginia people, the spirit of the Route 10 committee for 20 years, having a dream to make this a reality, today is not the conclusion. This is just a step along the process of a brighter future that each and every one of you all have been fighting for for two decades, and we will be fighting for for as long as we live. And to each and every one that the Reverend paid tribute to, a reporter was asking me, what does this mean today to you? It means to me, this is a job creator and a life saver. Amen. See, I was born in West Virginia. I married right. My mother-in-law was from Barnabas in Logan County. Logan County special at my house. The people of Logan County are special and throughout southern West Virginia. But we are West Virginians. We care deeply about who we are and our history and our values. And it's about protecting our children. I've got a daughter in high school. I bet there are people out here have daughters or granddaughters or sons that drive these roads and you lost sleep every night thinking about those curvy roads on old Route 10 and the slips and the lane closures. This was taking your life in your own hands. I did it many a time. It's a special day today. And I've got a son that's serving in our United States Marines. So all of our veterans here, I've seen the caps. God bless you for your service. So today's a celebration. It's a celebration of a lot of incredible hard work. It's a lot of, in, passion for the future of Southern West Virginia. Thank you for giving me the honor for whatever period of time to serve you as your congressman. I look forward to working with this governor for the future. Roads he knows are the future. He has said it so eloquently and he's got a real partner in me and my effort working with him and all the elected officials to make sure Southern West Virginia rises again. God bless you. Well, thank you. We've got a ribbon to cut here in a few minutes. It's going to be a great ride south of here, so in just a few minutes we'll get to that. But before we do, a couple more speakers to present. He is the uh, regional coordinator for the Honorable Senator Joe Manchin III, and he's a local guy. He was the newspaper editor of the Logan Banner for some time. Please welcome Mr. Mike Browning. Thank you all for allowing me to be here. It's truly an honor to be here today. Uh, thank you, Governor, for letting me be up on stage with you all. I, I covered this from start, uh, from, from when I started at the Banner in 1999 up until I left there. And I'm so glad to see it happen. Uh, when, when they asked me years ago, did I ever think I would see it? I said, well, maybe not in my lifetime. But thank God this day is here. 
Um, I was here when, when then Governor Manchin on his last day, uh, an incoming Governor Earl Ray Tomlin cut the ribbon on the first section and, and it was a proud day. And uh, ironically, Joe Manchin said, if you want a job in DC, just let me know. And I said, now nah, I'm gonna stay with the banner for a while. Uh, but then I ended up with him. And it's such a great day today. He couldn't be here, he wanted to be. I actually brought him over here. Uh, we took a trip to Jaeger for the 100th anniversary over there and I brought him over. And as we were driving around a curve, a coal truck came down the road and, and uh, we had to, to stop and almost pull up against the guardrail. And he said, buddy, you almost got me killed. And I said, that's why that you all got that road built across the river. So, and, and everything that, that Reverend Pollard said is absolutely true. I was there with him through, through all of that. Um, and, and, and Michael Pollard has been one of the, the leaders and keys to this project. So thank you, Reverend Pollard. And thank you to Congressman Ray Hall, because Congressman, you were the, you were the man. You were the man, and, and, and we appreciate you so much. So today I bring you greetings from U.S. Senator Joe Manchin. He's, he's sorry he couldn't be here today, but he did send down greetings. It is my distinct privilege to welcome those attending this long-awaited celebration of the opening of Route 10 between Logan and Mann. I regret that I am not able to be here today for this special occasion, as this project was developed and funded when I was governor and was a huge priority of my administration. Since becoming a United States Senator, I have been able to visit the project several times and have been so proud of the project progress, which I got to see firsthand just a few weeks ago. The last section of this project opened on my last day in office as governor before I transitioned to the U.S. Senate, which is why I'm so proud to see another section come to fruition today. Updating Route 10 to a four-lane highway is a much needed development for Southern West Virginia, which is why I joined so many of you in keeping this project at the forefront and celebrating its progress. Ultimately, Route 10 will extend from Mann to Gilbert and will provide a great benefit to residents and visitors to Southern West Virginia. Route 10 was once called the most dangerous highway in the state and anyone who drove the narrow and treacherous old road can attest to that. Together, we are gradually erasing that legacy and leaving Southern West Virginia an even safer place for future generations. This project is truly an investment in our people and an investment in the future of this region. It is a testament to the vision and commitment of the Logan County communities and their leadership that such efforts have been directed to new infrastructure. As I have said many times, if we expect to be able to attract new businesses and keep our existing businesses and communities healthy, we must provide the basic services they need to operate. At the foremost of these needs, are dependable roadways that make it easier and safer for our residents and visitors to navigate through the mountain state. I sincerely ap appreciate Paul Maddox, Secretary Tom Smith, former Governor Earl Ray Tomlin, Congressman Ray Hall, Pastor Michael Pollard, the entire Route 10 committee who has worked diligently on this project since the beginning, and all of the community leaders, visionaries, and those who have kept the Route 10 project at the forefront of our dedicated economic development efforts in Southern West Virginia. With warmest regards, Joe Manchin III. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Well, next up is uh, regional representative for the Honorable Shelley Moore Capito. It's uh, Richard Frazier. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me today. I really appreciate the opportunity to come out here and join you guys um, in the opening of this road. Um, Senator Capito couldn't make it here today, but I'm going to go ahead and read um, a statement for you guys. Thank you for inviting me to participate in the opening of this new section of Route 10. I regret that I'm not able to personally join you today due to a conflict in my schedule. However, please know I am with you in spirit as you celebrate this much anticipated corridor. This new highway means so much to Southern West Virginia and the people that live here. It has been a long journey to reach this point today, but we are finally here. The enhancement of our state's infrastructure has always been a very important value of mine. By expanding and improving our roadways, we also expand our economic and commercial opportunities. This highway brings not only the prospect of new business to the area, but also helps the citizens of Southern West Virginia to travel more safely. The completion of this highway could not have been accomplished without the diligent work of the Department of Highways, Route 10 Committee, and the community itself. After organizing community meetings and traveling to Washington, it seems that those efforts were not made in vain. Each of you here today have truly turned this dream of a better roadway into the reality that you and future generation, generations will enjoy. 
I look forward to hearing of new business development in the area and having those who travel through southern West Virginia enjoy its scenic beauty without worrying about the road. Thank you once again for including me in this, monu in this momentous event. It is an honor to serve you in the United States Senate. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. Our next speaker is, uh, really enjoys groundbreakings and ribbon cuttings here in West Virginia because he knows it means progress, and we do too. We're looking forward to many more of these occasions like here today with the help of our federal funding partner. Please welcome the West Virginia Division Administrator with Federal Highways, Mr. Edward Stephen. Edward. Good afternoon. It's great to be here with you all this afternoon. Uh, Governor Justice, my pleasure seeing and meeting you. Uh, Reverend Roland, I just want to say, where, where's the hat? We need to do tithes and the offerings. That's the federal reimbursement. <laughs> But we want, it's a pleasure to stand before you this afternoon. Uh, I bring you joy from the Federal Highway Administration here in West Virginia. I've been here for 15 months, moved here from Washington, D.C., but I'm a down-home Southern man from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So it's always great to be with a group of people that love life, love beauty, and love saying y'all. So it's great. <laughs> it's really, really great to be here. I just want to announce a couple people that have come with me. Uh, Stephanie Hickman, who's the Assistant Division Administrator. Uh, she's doing a detailed assignment uh, in my office. Uh, everyone know Ed Compton, the Director of Project uh, Delivery in my office. And one of the most important people in my office and to this job is Yvonne Smith. Everyone know Yvonne. <laughs> Yvonne, the project area engineer on this particular project, and she did an outstanding job uh, working with the local, with the DOH, with everyone to make this an outstanding job. I've been here 15 months, and about a year ago, uh, Yvonne brought me out on the project uh, as I'm visiting and getting familiar with West Virginia and our projects. And of course, we went up the old road. Being from South Louisiana, we have bayous. We have swamps. We don't have hills. <laughs> we definitely don't have mountains, okay? So as we going up the old highway, I become silent. <laughs> I become so quiet that they thought I was asleep. But I was nervous and I was praying. <laughs> and when I got back through this project, as we leaving out, take just a little liberty, say, Yvonne, we need to finish this project. I'm not coming back up here until it's finished. And so we got it finished. It took over 20 years, but in 12 months, we got it finished. If you need a job done, take me up on a narrow mountain road. We'll get the job done, okay? But, but it's a pleasure to be here. It's a beautiful job, beautiful project. My, uh, I commend DOH and all the staff that work on the project, the contractor. When I look through this project from which I come eight months or 12 months ago, it's just amazing. I think from what I've heard today, I think from the local community to pull together and to not to stop for something that you dream of, something you really believe in. And I truly believe that this project is going to be a project that they're going to save lives, they're going to bring in economic development, and going to just show the region, the state, and the country what can happen when everyone pulls together for a common cause. So we thank you all for putting this together. We thank you all for getting this project come to fruition. And we're looking forward to seeing the numbers of accident reduction and the great gener economic generator that are going to come from this project. Again, thank you, and we're looking forward to seeing you sometime in the future. And, uh, and Edward, you will, for sure. Well, today, 
this is this will be the first time I've had the pleasure of introducing the former West Virginia Division Administrator with Federal Highways because the last time I introduced him at a ribbon cutting he held the position that Mr. Stephen Curley holds so Tom be careful what you wish for <laughs> ladies and gentlemen please welcome our Secretary of the West Virginia Division of Transportation as well as the West Virginia Commissioner of the West Virginia Division of Highways Mr. Tom Smith Thank you, Randy. Governor Justice, Governor Tomlin, Congressman Jenkins, Congressman Rahal, Secretary Maddox, it is such a delight to be here today. I've been here over the years a number of times with the construction and, and finally to see this project come to fruition is just so gratifying. Really makes the point that transportation is all about saving lives and making lives better. And that's one of the things I'm really proud to be on Governor Justice's transportation team because he has picked transportation as the centerpiece for economic recovery for the state of West Virginia. And that's what we'll do with his program, save lives and make lives better. So important. I'm going to give brief remarks and then I want to introduce the, the governor. I know he wants to talk about his road program some and talk about what it can do. Uh, there's some folks I do want to recognize first uh, in groups. I want to recognize our awesome West Virginia contractors and our awesome West Virginia consultants. Uh, they help us in the biggest sort of way. It's a, a truly a public-private partnership in West Virginia as we work together. I want to recognize our federal partners, Edward Stevens and uh, other folks who are here from the Federal Highway Administration. It's the model for how federal partnerships should work. And uh, finally, as far as a group, I want to recognize the awesome men and women of the West Virginia DOT. Every day I serve in this position, I am more in awe of the work they do, the incredible hard work, the incredible dedication. So well done, team. <laughs> Some quick statistics about Route 10. Uh, as many of you know, uh, back in the early 2000s, Reader's Digest uh, recognized it as one of the 20 most dangerous roads in America. Uh, tremendous uh, problem out here and one that needed to be uh, attended to. Today we're uh, opening 6.7 miles of highway at a cost of about $200 million. Uh, seven bridges on this contract. The contractors that helped out here, Triton Construction, Vasilio and Grogan, Bezac, Kanawha Stone, and West Virginia Paving. Wonderful work on all of this uh, extended contract that we had here, seven different contracts. The, the total uh, Route 10 project is about 12 and a half miles at a cost of about $400 million. Uh, we have to build these roads in usable sections and uh, what we've done with Route 10 here is build uh, this usable section that will be opening today and I want to talk more about that in just a second. I'll come back to that. So to tee this up, uh, I, I want to say about my boss, Governor Justice, uh, among many virtues, one of his virtues is he is a very impatient man. Now that may not sound like a virtue, but in this case it is. When you look at economic recovery, when you look at what we need to do for our state, uh, he has really turned the heat on, up on us at West Virginia DOT, and that's what we need to do. Now, I will say that we tried to sit down and figure out how to hit the ground running, and so we pushed out millions and millions of dollars of contracts. Uh, really, we had no new revenue until July the 1st, uh, but we have already been able to leverage $415 million. That's almost twice the stimulus program that uh, President Obama had back in 2009. We've already leveraged that amount and are pushing that out in waves and it's all types of roads. It's hitting uh, all types of construction slides, uh, interstate reconstruction, smaller roads, uh, big roads, county roads, everything coming and going, all types of work. But now here's the really important part. These bigger roads like West Virginia, or West Virginia 10 have to be built in these usable sections. And it's very, very difficult to build these very expensive roads. This, this road cost about $26 million per mile. I remember compiling a statistic for Congressman Rahal, uh, who had asked me to check into this from a federal perspective. Wisconsin and Florida, it's about $4 million per mile. So this is remarkable how much it costs to do this. This is important. In, able, in order to be able to get to the bigger roads beyond Route 10, uh, roads like the Nitro St. Albans I-64 bridge up in the Charleston area, like the turnpike widening job in Beckley, like finishing the Coalfields Expressway. Uh, we need the ability to get to the bigger bonded amounts and that's what you're going to be faced with voting on on October the 7th. To get to these bigger projects like that, 
Uh, we need the ability to bond out the dollars that we've gotten through this legislative session. So I, I really, truly ask you to remember that. So important that these big roads make such a difference for economic recovery, and, and that's what's in front of us. So with that, uh, what I want to say is that Governor Justice has been remarkable uh, with his vision that he had for this tra transportation program. He came up with the idea, he fleshed out the vision, he pushed it across the finish line. These jobs provide thousands, that jobs all over the state provide thousands and thousands of jobs, projects provide the thousands and thousands of jobs, provide hope, provide economic recovery, uh, provide re uh, potentially relief from our terrible drug problem that we have here as folks have meaningful jobs. And so it's just so important that we're able to get this roads program stood up and really moving for the citizens of West Virginia. Well, enough about me. Uh, again, Governor Justice uh, uh, as the person who ended up having the vision for the roads program. I know he's very proud of it. I'm very honored to be a member of his team and honored to be a part of uh, this historic program. So with that, I would like to introduce the 36th governor of the state of West Virginia, Governor Jim Justice. Tom, thank you so much, and thank all of you for being here. Now, all of you that know me know that I'll just speak plain and to the truth, and I'll speak in language that you can completely understand. First of all, I'd like to brag on Tom Smith just a second. He's a superstar, and I am really, really blessed to have him. And he's doing tremendous work every day. The other thing I'd like to say is this. It was good as far as I'm concerned that Congressman Jenkins, Congressman Ray Hall, Governor Tomlin, there was not terribly many of us here today. And as they announced all those that were responsible for this great project, we got more applause than anybody. <laughs> and so I was happy that we were just a few that were here. Now I gotta say this, Governor Tomlin, Nick Joe Rahal, they have been friends of mine forevermore. We've talked about them by their beautiful tans like they're out to pasture. But for God's sakes of living, I played high school golf with Nick Rahal. Why is he out to pasture and I'm not out to pasture? But you know there's another man right here that was my hero in every way, Willie Akers. And you've got to give him a giant round of applause. I mean, has he not been something else? That's all there is to it. Now let me tell you just this. We in West Virginia, especially we in Southern West Virginia, know, know that sometimes we get the short end of the stick. And absolutely we know how important a road is. We know how much importance it brings as far as safety. We know how many jobs it brought. We know how much goodness and opportunity that it brings to southern West Virginia or to anywhere in West Virginia. Now I won't bore you, but you've got to know just this. When I took office, we were struggling in a lot of ways. One way for certain, we were losing population. We had to come up with a way to create immediate jobs. There is no better way than highways. No better way. Now we are on the cusp of doing something that is truly unbelievable. Everyone here has spoken of 20 years, 20 years of real dedication it took to make this dream come true. And oh, how much it's needed but 20 years is too long. It's just plain too long. Now, 
we have a real opportunity. We have a real opportunity to create real live jobs and bring employment to our state like crazy. With all the jobs, and I beg you to look at this first sign right here. Tom Smith has already identified 600 road projects that we're going to be doing. 600! And they're going to be fixing old roads, they're going to be fixing potholes so you don't tear your car all to pieces going to the convenience store, and they're going to be building new and exciting new roads. Those jobs could total as many as 48,000 new jobs. It's off the chart what's right in front of us. Now, October the 7th is an important day. And I want you to know that some are out in the world circulating rumors that says, on October the 7th, you're voting for a tax increase. You're voting on October the 7th for your taxes to maybe go up. There's no truth to that whatsoever. Your taxes will not change in any way, shape, form, or fashion. If anybody tells you that, you tell them they don't have a clue what in the world they're talking about. All the funding is in place now. Everything is ready to go. All that we're going to do now, that the funding is in place, is be able to put it in a box and make that happen. You would only be voting against this to not have Route 10 over and over and over and over. You would not save a dime. It will not cost you a dime. Not one single dime. It will not cost this state to go into one single dime of deeper debt. And anybody that tells you that has some perverted agenda of their own. It's our chance. It's a vision that will take us somewhere. And I will promise you lastly just this, that if I have anything and I can do anything whatsoever because of my great friend Nick Rahal to name this highway, it will give me a great honor to name it Nick Joe Rahal. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, Governor Justice. Well, as we enter ceremony this afternoon, next up is, of course, to cut the ribbon, and then I'll give you instructions as to how to exit this afternoon. But we offer a benediction, and uh, we reached out to a gentleman that you know well. He's the former pastor of the Church of God down in Maine, and we had to reach out all the way down to Central Florida to have him come back home with a suntan to <laughs> offer our benediction. Pastor Bernard okay. Cook. Somebody's got to do it, I know, you know. I told Randy it was dangerous to book in the meeting like this with two preachers. <laughs> you don't know what you're going to get, folks. <laughs> but it's an honor to come back. We've driven 14 hours to get back. And it's an honor to come back. Just a couple of things real quickly, and I'll pray. Uh, don't preach, pray. But uh, uh, when, when we done the groundbreaking on the man in, Governor Tomlin said something at that time that, that was so me. He said when he was a little boy, he used to ride in his parents' car to Oceana, Jesse, Wyoming County, and he would lay down in the back seat because he was afraid of the mountains on Route 10. I did that coming to Logan. I was scared to death. Then the other thing that was so funny was when Congressman Ray Hall and Senator Burr started getting some money appropriated for Route 10, USA Today picked up on it and accused them of pork spending for West Virginia. They called Congressman Ray Hall for an interview, and here's what he said. You go to Logan County, you drive that road, you interview those two preachers down there, myself and Mike, come back and I'll give you an interview. So, 
He comes down here. We have the sheriff's department stop traffic on Route 10 and let this guy get out. Here's what he done. <laughs> I promise you it wasn't mine. Then I tell him, look, this is not pork. This is survival. The headline on the USA Today with Congressman Rahal's picture was, it's not pork, it's survival. <laughs> so, again, it's a privilege to be home. I called uh, WVOW from Florida the other day on What's Your Opinion, and I just about lost it. I love you people. you are always be home to us. We pastored for over 30 years in man, and uh, so you are my people. We're West Virginians. And when Randy called, he, I told him where I lived. I said, along with about 100,000 100, West Virginians, that's down there, because they're down there. Let us pray, and then uh, we'll do our ribbon cutting. And thank you. I've never cleaned up after a governor before, by the way. <laughs> Almighty God, we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ with high praise upon our lips and in our hearts. We have followed the scriptural admonition of Isaiah chapter 40 and verse, verses 30 through 5. Clear the way of the Lord in the wilderness. Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be lifted up and every mountain be made low. And let the rough terrain be made plain and the rugged terrain a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all flesh will see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. We're here today to sanctify this highway and declare it to be the king's highway and the highway of holiness. We pray that the angel of the Lord will protect and guide those who travel this highway. We declare this highway to be a testimony to the Lord that with God all things are possible. And whomever may travel this road, no matter what obstacle they may be facing, they can see this highway and know that they can trust in a God who can overcome any obstacle in their life. We thank our many citizens and neighbors who encouraged us in the pursuit of this dream. All the members of our highway group, we pray, pray your blessings upon you. We thank our highways commissioners, our elected county officials, our governors, our late Senator Byrd, and our friend Congressman Ray Hall for their help and diligence. Most of all, God, we thank you. For Abraham saw your day with an eye of vision and rejoiced. And by faith, we saw this day and we rejoiced as well. So as a minister and a pastor of the gospel of Christ, I dedicate this highway in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. you feel great <laughs> and a great day in Logan County West Virginia ladies and gentlemen thank you for being here for those of you with cameras it is time to cut the official ribbon on West Virginia Route 10 Congressman Ray Hall Governor Tomlin if you'll join us over here please dignitaries on the stage if you'll come with way we're gonna cut a ribbon ladies and gentlemen thanks for being with us and I'll let you know when it's safe to leave okay okay now we all we all need to do this together okay this is an absolutely, really wonderful day. So we're going to do it on one, two, three. Now we're going to do that slow. Now we're going to get this right. Okay. One, two, three, go.